It's pretty easy to see that training will help you survive the fight, but will it hurt you in the fight after the fight? Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. Welcome to today's active self-protection extra lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. These videos normally we put on the Active Self Protection Extra channel, but I recorded this video with Terry from Firearms Legal Protection and I thought it was important enough to post it over here as well. I just want to say thanks to Firearms Legal Protection. They're the ones who are providing for these videos, giving us not only their expertise, but the sponsorships that make them happen. So do me a favor, hit the link in the description and check them out because they might be a good fit for you and your family to help protect you for the fight after the fight. Hey everybody, it's John and I'm here with Terry Johnson from Firearms Legal Protection and we're here at Wilderness Tactical in uh, Phoenix. You guys know I use their stuff all the time, they let us use some space, grateful for that. Got a good discussion today and we've been talking about this a little bit. You know I'm a training junkie, I like right. to take classes as a student and of course I teach classes too. Right. But I've had some people, uh, this, this idea that says, wait a minute, won't if I train a bunch, won't that be held against me? in a court of law. And so I've asked the attorney to come and talk with us about it. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. So, uh, Terry, what do you think of this argument? You know, I've heard these folks say that, well, wait a minute, you've trained so much and an overzealous prosecutor will say, aha, you wanted to kill someone because you trained a lot. What do you think? I've heard that argument before. Um, and, and again, you just, it, it comes down to what's the purpose of your training. Mm. The purpose of your training is to protect yourself, knowing when to and when not to use lethal force, how to avoid it, things along those lines. If you can demonstrate that, that's great. But if you're just taking classes to take classes, to say, hey, you know, I've got uh, this, I've done this, and boy, I'm gonna go out and shoot up everything, and no one's ever gonna mess with me, and things along those lines, you know. But I think the more trained you have, the better off actually you really are. Um, even in a court of law, because now, if you take the stand, which is probably a whole nother- That's a big question in and of itself. Whole nother tape at some point. But if you take the stand and you have to talk about your credentials and things along those lines, you're more likely to, from an expert position, to know what's going on as long as you don't lose that training. In other words, we, we did a video a while back about the corporal in uh, Brazil mm -hmm. and, and that one. You know, that would be one where you would say, God, that was not reasonable, you know. But yeah. if you could justify based upon your training and other things, why you've done certain things, I believe a jury will look at you in a more positive light as opposed to some guy who just picked up a firearm, who has never gone back to the range, he just got his, you know, CCW, um, never did another thing. Those are, I think, the people that scare the juries and the citizens more than anyone else. So I think you said something interesting there that you said, wait a minute, when I'm talking about my credentials, I'm going back to... I did this and this is my training and so I have to be able to document that I knew that ahead of time. So you might say, well, I watched a YouTube video once. Um, and, and I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but we're here talking on YouTube, right? right. Um, now you might say, wait a minute, I can validate that I've actually seen that or whatever, but if I can document that I had this training and that's why I acted the way that I did and that training came from a competent authority, that seems that it would help me. That is correct. I mean, you know, I, I've got uh, two credentials for instruction. Um, I also have a legal background, obviously. So if I'm ever in a situation, will I be held to a higher standard? Probably in the minds of the jurors. Sure. However, um, I can then point and say, you know, legally, this, 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 and this, or based upon training that I've taken from John or taken from other places, I can look at that, you know, and I, I can refer to that and people will say, okay, this person has a basis for what they're doing as opposed to, oh, you well, know, felt good. Yeah, felt good. Or, yeah, I took a six-hour class to, you know, get a CCW four years ago and, 
you know, shot my gun twice since. That doesn't go over too well. Right. Well, and especially, wait a minute. So if I if I showcase, I have a high level of skill. That's why I train because God forbid I get in that moment. Yeah. I want to know that I can use this firearm to defend myself and I'm going to not make mistakes with it. Correct. That's a big deal to me. Now, I, I want to ask too about the, the trainers that you train with because... Um, Mm. There are some in the industry where you might see a class that's titled the gentleman killer. Yeah, um, you know it, it's interesting you bring that up. You, you, most people, most respectable gun owners and trainers like yourself, aren't going to use the word killer or or um, things or acronyms along those lines. And the reason is we don't shoot to kill; we shoot to stop the threat. And that is, is something that we have to get out again and again. Why are you doing this? Because I was in imminent fear of death or great bodily harm, and I had to stop this threat. If you get a class or go to a class and they start telling you, give them one in the head, you know, shoot them in the back, um, et cetera, things along those lines, that's not the type of class you need to be in. And quite honestly, if you're in the middle of one of those things, it's best that you leave. So the reputation and the, the, the trustworthiness of the person who gives me training is important. Because if they, you know, a, a prosecutor may very well say, wait a minute, well, you, you were trained by this person who has this inflammatory internet personality who um, has trained you yes. to do these bad things. Correct. And that could give me problems. It, it could. And, and, you know, here's the thing. If you go to a... Um, you go to a place that's known as a CCW factory, yeah. you know, where you go in and, uh, and I'm not going to name names, but, you know, let's say I've heard of places in Florida, literally, it's, uh, they give you a gun, you shoot into a bucket, you disarm the firearm, give it to this guy, walk from here to the door, and guess what happens? They give you a certificate. Right. That's scary. That's very Th scary. Those are the ones, I believe... That type of train is going to hurt you if you ever have to use lethal force. Mm. You know, because you meet the bare minimum to get a concealed permit doesn't mean that you've trained properly. So the more training you have, the better knowledge, the better research, you know. Um, you you deal with Mossad. He is a yes. no, known quantity. So you can say, I've gone to his classes. This is his teaching, right. et cetera. You know, those are things that really make a difference versus... You know, I went to some guy, you know, he was at the gas station, and, you know, as I was filling up my car, I get my CCW. And here's a thought on that. So training is great, uh, but I'd love your thoughts on this, Terry, because if, if I got to think about the person that I train with is going to perhaps end up on the witness stand talking about this is what I trained them to do, and this is how that person performed in the things that I trained him or her in. And do I want that trainer on the stand for me? Yep. Are they, yep. you know, there's some, again, they, they have a, a cult following, but are they going to be good in front of a jury? This is why you brought up Masada Yub. Okay, one of the reasons that I'm super proud of, of my graduation from MAG-40 is, do I want Masada Yub on the witness stand for me? You're darn right I do. Uh, and he's going to be able to say, here's exactly how John performed. Here's the right. things that John was taught. We can show those things in court because he's the expert. And that will help me, not hurt me. Absolutely. And so, you know, as a, if I were a prosecutor, some of the questions I would ask, you know, would be, so you put these classes together. Have you ever failed anyone? Because if you just pass everyone that comes through, or better yet, what are the qualities that you look for in an individual before they can take the class? Mm. Do they have to have any prerequisites? You know, do you already have to have a, CP or a CCW? Yeah. Have you had to been carrying for three years? Those are things that actually help to show that you're a more um, responsible, yeah. knowledgeable uh, person in carrying a firearm. And if you have to use lethal force based upon your training and everything else, because guess what? Take a police officer, for example. Again, I'm not saying every police officer is perfect, but we all know they go through training. And what do we always go back to when they're involved in a shooting? What's the policy and what's their level of training? What can they document? What can I submit as evidence? Exactly. So, 
you know, if you, as an officer, only shoot twice a year, guess what? That might be good enough. If you, as a CCW holder, only shoot once every four years... Especially if you make a mistake. Yeah. Now that can be seen as negligence. Yes. So I like trainers that have objective standards. I like trainers that that maintain that. It's one of the reasons that we, when we do our, our Cover Your Ass tour stops, that we give objective data to people. Here's how you performed uh, when you got here. Here's how you performed at the end. Here's the curriculum that you were taught. And so then that way we have documentation for them that says, if God forbid you're ever in a, a thing, this is what we've done. And here's how I have told you to keep training and practicing so that you can keep these skills high. And the trainers that do that, I'm not toting my own horn here, I learned that from the great trainers that I've trained under, are the ones that will help you stay safe legally. Oh, absolutely, because at the end of the day, it's their reputation that's being put on. on and, and think about it, <clears throat> if you've done something wrong and you've just kind of lost it at that moment, there's no way that one of your trainers, you're not going to call that trainer to come up and say, yep, everything John did is right. But if you've done the things you're supposed to do, right. you can now go back and get your trainer and say, is this what you would have taught? Yep, I taught this, I taught this, in my opinion, because now they could be classified as an expert right. or qualified as an expert, I should say, to give an opinion, and that goes a long way. It does. So the more of those you have of high-quality people, the better chance you have of being seen as reasonable, as doing the right thing in the moment. And so it seems to me that the more training from reputable sources you have, then you can stack that up like cord wood and you make a prosecutor's job an awful lot harder to prove that you were not acting reasonably. Oh, absolutely. And the thing that, that you really got to keep in mind as you go through all of this is training's a good thing. You know, I mean, it, it's no different than riding a bike. If you haven't rode a bike in years, you may remember how to do it exactly, but guess what? When you first get on, you're going to be kind of back and forth trying to get your balance. Um, training is good. It's repetitive. It, it's the muscle memory. You get it inside you. The more you do, the more you know, the more you can learn, and the better off you will be. Mm. And guys, Terry hasn't asked me to do this, but I'm going to say this now, is that this is why I think having a company like Firearms Legal Protection behind you is so important. Because not only do they bring us this kind of education, I mean, Terry is here letting us pick his brain. An attorney's charged three, four, five hundred bucks an hour for this kind of knowledge, and he lets us pick his brain. But, but to have somebody, that the legal team standing behind you, that can say, hey, wait a minute, we need, to, we need to get with all of your trainers and build this case and talk to the prosecutor beforehand. So we're not ended up in court. We want that prosecutor right. to know this is going to be a fight you don't want to fight. And having a company like Firearms Legal Protection behind me where I'm not mortgaging the house to do that, but I have this team behind me, I think it's super valuable, guys. They, they provide a, a great discount for active self-protection fans. I'm a member for me, for my wife, for uh, you know the rest of our team. Um, we trust FLP and so think about uh, something like that in this year and I think that'll help you guys. So Terry, Thank you. thanks for the discussion. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you and stay safe.